of us that are still struggling to find what works best for us in terms of managing our mood, uh, specifically again, anxiety or depression, MTHFR might be really relevant for you. Hello, hello, welcome back to my channel, Rethink ADHD. I was going to dive into nutrition. I'm gonna say that like for five more videos. <laughs> But I actually found a really great way to caveat or like to segue into it. So as I was thinking about nutrition, I started making a list of all the things that people say you should take to help with your ADHD symptoms. Some of it's scientifically backed, some of it's like, nah, maybe. And I realized there's also a genetic piece of this, that if I don't talk about it, I mean, am I even doing what I do for work, for a living? So I want to talk to y'all about this gene called MTHFR which stands for, and I don't actually know that this is of any value at all, other than that I get to say that I said it, which I feel good about myself. So I'm gonna do it and get myself a dopamine hit. So it stands for <laughs> methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase. Did I say that right? Yes, I nailed it. Uh, so MTHFR, you can just say that for sure, unless you just you know need a dopamine hit. It's one of the genes that is involved in how your body produces folate. If you don't know what folate is, I don't know, Google it, because I'm not going to talk to you about what folate is. It's in your leafy greens, your spinach, your romaine lettuce. You know, it's important for spinal cord development if you're a mom, all that kind of stuff. Um, but anyway, it's folate. Google it. It's everywhere. So this particular enzyme is really important for the production of folate. And folate does all kinds of cool stuff. Obviously, it's good for your skin, hair, nails. It's good for the brain, your body loves it, and you know, that's, that's, that's kind of the thing. Depending upon whether or not you have a genetic variant though, in this MTHFR gene, you might have different levels of this enzyme that is available to produce folate. So for certain people that have a genetic variant in MTHFR, they can actually have up to 70% reduction in the amount of enzyme that is actually available to make folate in their body. First question you're probably thinking is, oh my goodness, does that mean that I'm folate deficient? Well, it's not necessarily as clean as that. Sometimes your doctor may choose to order what's called a folate level to follow up on that genetic test to see if you are actually folate deficient. Sometimes you will have compensated for it by things in your diet, and so it's not really impacting you. You can have up to 70% reduction in the amount of enzyme that is available in your body to help make folate, and so you have less of the active form of folate. There are two different buckets that are related to having a genetic enzyme, or what? <laughs> a genetic variant. So you can either be Charlie Charlie in one of the variants that we study, or you can be Tango Tango in one of the variant, the other variants that we study. You're gonna have one or the other, not both. So if you get an MTHFR test, look to see if you have Charlie Charlie or Tango Tango. And of course you wanna make sure that they're in the right variant. But needless to say, that is how you figure out if you have an MTHFR genetic variant and may have a reduction in the amount of the MTHFR enzyme that helps your body make folate. So we talk about folate a lot in diet nutrition. We talk about it for hair, skin, and nails. Um, so how does it relate to ADHD? Well, there have been studies showing that for moms in particular, when they're pregnant, when they have this MTHFR gene and they have, I'm sorry, if they have a variant in the MTHFR gene, because of course they have a gene, if they have the variant in the MTHFR gene, then their children may have an increased risk of developing ADHD. Um, it's really, I would say early stages on that. I actually only found maybe two studies relating to that. I'm sure if I did a deeper dive, I could have, and unfortunately like pregnancy is like a thing I don't do. I don't know a whole lot about the, the, the pregnancy phenomenon. But if you are planning on having a baby or you are currently pregnant, it might be valuable to go get a genetic test done to see if you do in fact have a variant and if there's anything that you can do to help give your baby to be the best possible launch point. Not that ADHD is anything to really prevent necessarily. For those of us that are already in this world and not still incubating, uh, and we have ADHD, it doesn't necessarily directly relate to our ADHD, but it does still have relevance because as many of you know, 
ADHD often comes with other goodies like anxiety and depression. I've been very honest about my own struggles with anxiety and depression um, and how those got better when I actually started getting treatment for my ADHD. But for those of us that are still struggling to find what works best for us in terms of managing our mood, uh, specifically again, anxiety or depression, MTHFR might be really relevant for you because there have been some studies showing that for individuals that have the variant in MTHFR, again, either Charlie Charlie or Tango Tango and that other one, if you're given this supplement called L-methylfolate, you may actually, if you Google it, you may see it called Deplin as well. If you're given this supplement L-methylfolate alongside our most commonly prescribed antidepressants, so SSRIs or SNRIs, um, if you need to look any of that stuff up, do. Things like Prozac is an SSRI. Things like Effexor would be our SNRI. So if you've ever heard of those brand names, they also are medications that fall into a class. So if you're getting treated for anxiety or depression and you're being treated with either an SSRI or and or an SNRI, there's limited study to suggest that if you also have the genetic variant in MTHFR, you may actually get better outcomes if you take L-methylfolate, the supplement, with your medication. There's not a whole lot out there about taking L-methylfolate on its own. So I love and appreciate my integrated folks and I love naturopathic approaches to mental health. Unfortunately, the science isn't exactly backing that up. But if you're looking for a supplement or a medical food to add on to what you're already doing to take care of your mental health and in terms of taking your um, your SSRI, your SNRI, or what, your antidepressant, then you may want to add this on to give your body a little bit of a lift in terms of helping those medications be as effective for you. So it's not directly related to ADHD, but it is related because as we know, like I said, ADHD comes with all these little goodies. Some of them are good and bad, some, you know, just, it is what it is. Um, and so that's MTHFR. Um, if you don't know your status, you can always order a genetic test. There are a variety of different testing, testing services out there. I'm actually gonna do a review of several of them at some point in this life. I'm going to physically order them myself and no, they will not be paying me to do this. I will, I will indicate if that ever happens, but I will physically do reviews of these genetic tests and how to get them and things like that so that you can get the biggest, the biggest bang for your buck. But um, if you've ever been curious about folate, if you're really into nutrition and really understanding your status, if you have anxiety and depression alongside your ADHD, if you're pregnant or intending to become pregnant and you want to know whether or not there's anything you need to do from an ADHD perspective for your intend your child to be, go out and get tested for your MTHFR gene and see where you are. That's it. That's it for the this video, at least. I'm going to continue to make more genetic videos. I do realize that we've gotten a little bit off track, as expected with me having ADHD as well, but we are going to do a lot more genetic videos. So stay tuned and see you next week. Bye.